Hey everybody, it's Mr. N, and we are going to cover the next section, which is on bisectors of triangles. Basically, um, these are warm-ups that I'm going to have you do later. Let's take a look, though. Let's get started. What we're going to do today is we are going to learn a lot of vocabulary and a lot of what some of these things mean, and then we will practice some of them. First of all, the first one we're going to talk about is something called concurrent lines. You can say concurrent lines, concurrent rays. You can all say concurrent segments. When the three or more when three or more lines, rays, and segments intersect at the same point. So when I have three or more things intersecting at the same point, we're going to say those are concurrent. Then we've got a median of a triangle. And a median is a segment whose endpoints are a vertex of the triangle and the midpoint of the opposite side. So take a look at this median. It starts at the vertex of a triangle and goes to the midpoint. D is our midpoint. So this is our median. It starts at C. It starts at the vertex and will go to the midpoint of the opposite side. The altitude of a triangle is a perpendicular segment from a vertex to a line containing the opposite side. Every triangle will have three altitudes, just like every triangle will have three medians. So this is one of the medians. If I find the midpoint there and draw it like this, let's do it in another color real quick though so you can see, this would be a second median. And then if I did it in another color again, this would be and found the midpoint right there, this would be the third median. Now these medians will intersect right here and we will learn what that intersection is in a minute. The altitude of a triangle. The altitude, <clears throat> we said, is a perpendicular segment from the vertex. I've already read that. So if I draw a triangle like that, the altitude goes from a vertex and is perpendicular. Okay, from a vertex and is perpendicular. From a vertex and is perpendicular. And again, we notice that this is perpendicular there we notice that they will all intersect in one point now remember it could the altitude this point can intersect on the outside so suppose I had uh, let me draw it a little bit better suppose I had an obtuse triangle like this right the altitude goes from the vertex but it's got to be perpendicular down here so it would be on the outside that would be the altitude all right, let's learn what these points are called when they intersect. We've got a few of these that we need to learn. First is the in-center. So this word, this point, is the in-center, and the in-center is where the angle bisectors. So in-center goes with angle bisectors. Intersect. And that point is equidistant from the three sides of the triangle. So this right, is an angle bisector for each of them. The, each of these segments uh, bisect the angles, and they will all intersect at this point, and we call that the in-center. And then we know this point is equidistant from the sides. What do I mean by equidistant from the sides? That means if I go like this, like this, right, that's the distance to the sides, like that. It's a perpendicular distance. Let me do it in another color so it stands out a little bit. That distance, that distance, and that distance, all three of those will be the same because it's equidistant from the sides. Then we've got the next one, which is called a circumcenter. On a circumcenter, right here. And this is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. Now, perpendicular bisector, we talked about it. All we have to do on a perpendicular bisector is to bisect and make it perpendicular. That was the last section to one of these sides, right? So if I do it to all three sides, that becomes the intersection of the three perpendicular bisectors, and that's the circumcenter. Okay, and this point now is equidistant from the three vertices. So this right here, notice the difference. This one was equidistant from the sides for the in-center, but the circumcenter will be equidistant from the three vertices. So all these three that I just drew will be the same. So these are the things you have to memorize. Not only do you have to memorize that the in-center is where the angle bisectors intersect, but then you have to memorize that it's equidistant from the sides. Not only do you have to memorize that the circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisector intersects, but then you have to memorize that it's equidistant from the three vertices. 
And the next one is called the orthocenter. Remember we had just talked about the altitudes? Well, this is where the altitudes intersect at this point, the orthocenter. And the orthocenter can be on the outside. Let's go back to here since I said that. Can the in-center ever be on the outside? No, because it's bisecting angles. So even if I drew an obtuse triangle, it's bisecting angles, so it'll always be on the inside. Can the circumcenter ever be on the outside? Well, let's see. If I drew an obtuse triangle, right, and I'm doing over here bisectors, this is a perpendicular bisector. This would be a perpendicular bisector. Look what happens on this one. And this would be a perpendicular bisector. Look at that. They will intersect. So yes, this can be on the outside. <clears throat> Orthocenter, same thing. Yes, it can be on the outside. And this is the point where the altitudes intersect, but there's nothing special about this one. And the last one is the centroid. On the centroid, this, let's highlight it here, this centroid is where the medians intersect. Now remember what a median is? We had just talked about it. A median goes from a vertex and it uh, cuts the opposite side in half. So it's the midpoint of the opposite sides. Now, can the, can the centroid ever be on the outside? No, since we're keeping all these lines within the triangle, it will not. Okay, so as a recap, the in-center and the centroid have to stay on the inside, but the circumcenter and the orthocenter can be on the outside. Now, here's the important part of a median, or the centroid, sorry, is that it's two-thirds the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite sides. In other words, take a look here. If I'm talking about AX, A to X is going to be two-thirds what A to M is. So it's like three parts. Two of them here, one there. Two of them here, one there. So from the vertex to that centroid is two of the parts, and then to the opposite side is the third part. So it's two-thirds the distance of the whole thing. Now, one thing I would like you to do is I have videos on inscribing and circumscribing triangles. Those are the first few examples. I want you to take a look at those. It is not easy. We might review how to do this in class, but I need you to uh, definitely watch those videos and I'll put them in the link. Um, so make sure you watch the videos on how to inscribe and circumscribe triangles. Okay, and that's pretty much uh, the basics of it, but I do wanna do a few examples. This one starts with number four, so we're starting with number four here. And let's see what we got. It says in exercises four and five, find the coordinates of the circumcenter of the triangle with the given vertices. So this first one says the vertices are six, zero, 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 and zero, four. So I need a little bit more space here. I'm going to eventually show you how to do these algebraically. But right now, I just want to show you how to do them graphically. So I'm going to slide down to here, and I'm going to add in a grid for us, okay? So I'm going to insert that. So I've put in this grid, and let's take a look at these points again. The points were 6, 0. I'm going to slide this here since this over will overlap it, and we can just kind of do it right on top of that. Since we've got these at 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0. I should have probably made this a little bit bigger. And then over here we've got 0, 0. And then we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got those points. So now recall that we said that a circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. So I really only need to find two of these. So perpendicular bisector, it, the easiest ones to find are these two sides of this triangle. Okay, If I draw a triangle out of this, the easiest ones would be those two sides. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, this has a length of 6, so halfway would be 1, 2, 3. That would cut it in half, and that would be the perpendicular bisector going this way. The other one over here, from 0 to f this is 0, there's 4, so it would be at 2, and that would be a perpendicular bisector that way. So that is the point where they intersect, and that's at 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 3, comma 2 is the circum 
center for this one. All right, let's do this again for the next problem. And I've went ahead and erased what we had. And let's plot the points for the new one. The new one is 0, 0. Then negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. And then negative 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 1. Let me zoom in a little bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is what we have. We have this triangle that looks like this. And now we need to draw the perpendicular bisectors. So for the first one, that's kind of easy. We will go ahead and draw that in. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So halfway would be 2. It would look like this. Now for the next ones, it gets a little tricky because I need to find a perpendicular slope and then I need to find a midpoint. So I will have to do this a little bit with some algebra here. And let's go ahead and find the midpoint. And let me label these so you know what I'm talking about. This point is U, this point is V, and this point was W. Let's go ahead and find the midpoint of, we'll work with this one, VW. Okay, so from V to W, the midpoint is negative 4 plus negative 6 over 2. So that's negative 5, comma, and then the other one was 0 plus 6. The y value is 0 plus 6 over 2, which would be 3. So negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. There's the midpoint. And now I need to draw a perpendicular to that. Well, the slope from v to w is I'm going to go over right here. You can count it with me. You're going to go over 1, 2, right? So we're going to rise up this way. So we can go down then and over if you want. Let's find out how much we go down. We go down 6. So we went down 6 over 2. Down 6 over 2. So that's going to be negative 3 as our slope. So negative 3. So our perpendicular slope will be positive 1 third. So that means I'm going to go up 1 over 1 from, I can do it from this point right here, up 1 over 1, 2, 3. And I'll cross right there, right where I wanted to, and that's the two intersections right there. So let's take a look at what this point is. That's at negative 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 2, negative, or positive 4. Okay, so the answer to this was negative 2, positive 4. And that's where that circumcenter is. Now, we will learn more algebraic ways of doing it. But right now, for these, just use, go ahead and use a grid and do it that way. So let me erase all this and remove this. And now we can move on to the other problems here. It says, let's move this down a little bit. It says, in exercises, it's not quite straight, but that's all right. Let's see. Okay. In exercise 6 and 7, P is the in-center of triangle QRS. Use the information given to find the indicated measure. So the in-center is where the angle bisectors meet. So the angle bisectors. And this is equidistant on top of that. Equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So that means these are all angle bisectors over here. And these right here are all congruent because they're the same distance from the sides. So that means if they tell me that P to J is 4X minus 8, and they tell me that P to L is X plus 7, that means 4X minus 8 equals that X plus 7. So 3X equals 15, X would be 5. And if they wanted to know what P to K was, this piece in here, let's highlight it in red, P to K, it's going to be the same as what the other ones are. So if I find P to J, and that's 4 times 5 minus the 8, so 20 minus the 8 gives me 12, that means this piece will be 12, and that piece right there will be 12 as well. So P to K is 12. 
All right, let's move on to the next one. Again, we know that it's where the angle bisectors um, uh, intersect. So this is congruent. These are congruent. These over here are congruent. And these sides are equidistant. So those are the things you have to memorize. So if P to N is 6X plus 2, then P to M is 8x minus 14, they're equal to each other. So solving for x, I'll get 2x equals 16, x is 8. So if x is 8, that will let me know that plugging it into the x here or here, it doesn't matter. If I plug it in here, 64 minus 14 is 50, right? And so that means pm is 50, and all of these will be 50 as well. So p to L would be 50. There are more problems that we could do. We could do ones with the centroid where it's two-thirds of distance. I have a whole video also uh, coming up on that and we will do those in class as well. I just wanted to give you a few basic examples here but we'll work on the other ones as well in class. So thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.